I'm Sasha. I'm a pre-sales consultant at CC11, and I'm usually the first one kicking it off with the customers talking about their IT landscapes, what kind of software they're going to use, and especially how they want to utilize it in the Kubernetes environments. I held a talk last year about the concept of GitOps and uh, another one where we've been talking about um, all the tool chains uh, the people are using, and there were a lot. So the last talk that was missing was how to utilize everything I've uh, learned last year, put it together and give it back to the customers or every engineer. And that's what we're going to do today. I've created a 40-minute talk. I'm going to uh, do it in 25 minutes. So um, sit tight. I'm going to talk um, briefly about GitOps um, as a paradigm. Um, we're going to go briefly through a simple um, example. And we're going to have a look at um, how it actually derives into a um, multiple software development lifecycle tool or approach. And then I'm going to uh, present to you how we at Sys11 um, actually want to uh, do this uh, for every engineering team that exists. And in the end, we're going to talk about the learnings and the findings we had there. I want to, uh, you to um, remember after the talk three things. The first one is um, always look out for your software supply chain management. This is a really um, important matter. Um, try to um, actually collaborate with everyone who's involved in your software setup. So even the operations teams who do not code uh, on your sof software. And the last one is um, always stay declarative. Imper imperative is something you can actually abstract, but make it uh, declarative in the end. So let's start. Um, during the software development life cycle, um, it already um, tries to utilize the uh, DevOps uh, philosophy itself, but the approach was al always a bit unclear. GitOps made it clear, um, as they said, um, we're going to um, create one fixed point, so there must be Git uh, setups. And uh, that's all you have to do, and now you can start coding and doing your software development lifecycle. There are three co core concepts to go. The first one is everything uh, should be handled as code, everything de declaratively. And um, if you want to actually communicate with other engineering teams or with systems, make it via merge requests, pull requests, issues, and, and so on, so you can document the actual problem. And um, during your software development lifecycle, always remember to utilize your CI CD. Uh, tooling you have. So you can create a, a workflow as a chain, as a pipeline, and get it back onto um, um, your production setup, for example. Let's have a small look into um, the concept. So we're having a software engineering team who's actually creating the code. They have a separate Git, either be WordPress, Prometheus, uh, MySQL, or any other things. Um, they're going to push it to Git, uh, and as soon as it's merged, it's going to um, create some uh, resources that can be used uh, by others. Um, in that specific case, it's going to be a, a container image and some um, configs to it, Helm charts, uh, values, YAMLs, for example, and stuff. And they're going to um, inform uh, the system engineering team who's actually trying to, de to deploy it. Usually fully automatic because we want to run into errors, so staging is going to be error prone. And after that is checked, um, we're going to deploy it to prod. There's uh, one second fixed point coming up. Um, thanks to Kubernetes, the infrastructure stays the same. This is a huge opportunity to actually standardize pipeline thoughts and workflows. So we're having a, a platform engineering team who takes care of Kubernetes. They are involved um, just by um, having a look into it, having the monitoring maybe up and um, just um, keep everything together in the production set um, set up. So this example only displays one software development lifecycle. If we want to have a look into a production setup, there are a lot of different tools we need to use. Um, if we concentrate just on uh, a Kubernetes cluster itself, um, there are things like um, an ingress load or load uh, um, reverse, uh, reverse proxy. <coughs> Sorry about that or uh, even the monitoring, and even for the individual app directly, there uh, needs to be some dependencies to a, um, a database management uh, system, maybe uh, for improvement of the, um, of the uh, loading time. We have a memory caching system and even a message broker system. 
And if we want to um, stick to the uh, GitOps principle in theory, we have to do it for every single software. We have to do the software development life cycle for each and every software in, uh, in itself. Uh, this can be uh, pretty much work uh, for just one team if they actually want to do it. And if we keep uh, uh, stick to the DevOps principle, uh, you build it, you run it. So uh, the big question here is how can we actually um, uh, lessen the effort the team has to bring up to? And there's one classical solution since the uh, 70s. It's always third party. Just, just bring uh, in some other teams who help you uh, just um, install it. So, so far, so good. Because we have Kubernetes, because we're having Git, um, it shouldn't be any problem to actually install it and have it running. Well, there is a little detail, operations management. We call it day two or day three operations, the things we cannot see beforehand after the deployment. Uh, the, uh, the classic um, error during Kubernetes management is, for example, the certificate management. Uh, easy error, everyone has it at, one, at least once. So um, the different communities actually decided to deliver the software with some resources. They cannot see and they, ca uh, they can't help you um, to actually uh, individualize uh, the, uh, each and every software. So you can actually be um, happy with the software during the next two to three years. So um, we thought about that, um, getting the software delivery done, getting the CI, uh, CD pipeline chained with multiple steps ahead and um, give the customers or the engineering teams itself, like each and every um, engineering team, uh, one big pipeline. So you're starting on the left with your uh, own software, you're adding some other softwares, you're uh, trying to keep it uh, uh, documented during um, a Git repository and you just blow it out into any Kubernetes cluster of your choice. Um, let's go one layer down. So this means in the end we're having uh, multiple um, soft, uh, um, pipelines um, we're going to um, try to combine and we're trying to uh, generalize them um, in one specific fixed point. It, at latest in the merging stage to prod, uh, prod like in the deployment phase. And um, this was our goal we actually tried to achieve. We wanted to create an automated workflow everybody can work with. It doesn't matter if you're a software developer for WordPress or if you're an infrastructure uh, or platform engineer for OpenStack and stuff. Everybody has to be generalized so everybody can work with it and everybody helps each other out. So we wanted to improve collaboration. This was uh, one specific task we had. We wanted to stick to GitOps ba uh, based on Git. And uh, we also wanted to automate as much as possible by not losing uh, any customization everybody has to do. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So um, merging every software you need starts um, always uh, with a Git. Um, we're talking now about the continuous integration uh, for every software. Uh, we're going to start with um, GitLab in our case and the um, CI tool GitLab CI itself. We expect every software uh, vendor or an, any engineering team to deliver us um, either um, a Docker image or container image itself and some configuration items uh, for the deployment helm. After that, we're just making sure that um, every um, delivered um, part is um, actually correct, that there are no uh, deprecation tasks, uh, which we're going to check with Pluto, um, that the config templates um, um, can be um, um, created out of those uh, given resources and documentaries uh, or the documentations. And uh, we're also going to do some tests we had um, experienced before. So this is what we're going to try to achieve um, before we're actually delivering every software. In this case, we're going to have um, multiple stages. And because we're working on GitOps, nearly each and every um, stage has its own uh, Git repository. The aim is that um, the software tools on the right are going to be um, um, enriched with some best practices from us, um, and it's all tested, and um, everybody uh, can just leave the, these steps behind and just use the software as is. So let's start with the pre-stage. 
the pre-stage was the most interesting one because we actually thought about um, generalizing uh, everything and what can be shared by each software. And we were um, finding some different um, checks and um, scripts uh, that can be used for any software regarding every every style, every every standard we could actually uh, utilize. So semantic versioning, policy testing is um, uh, actually an infrastructure thing which we uh, deploy to the software where we actually want the software to behave the, uh, the way we want, S some kind of uh, corporate policy if you want, and also some scripts for data collection during the, um, during the um, CI pipeline um, work. Um, that's why we created the so-called shared resources repository. As you can see, there are multiple scripts. There's a um, subfolder policy, so Python or Go. Um, all those can be shared by every software because um, this is the preparation um, up front. Um, the tool we used here uh, the most is uh, not actually a tool, it's a programming language. It's uh, Python because everybody speaks Python. We can actually say that uh, there are a lot of different libraries uh, that can be reused that we just have to manage in its dependency management. And uh, for example, here we're um, actually um, checking um, two different uh, values YAMLs from the Helm chart uh, with a library DeepDiff, which is um, already maintained uh, by another community. So we can actually enrich that. Uh, everybody can read that and everybody knows what the steps uh, uh, will um, do. Um, next one, the linting stage. So, so we actually separated the testing stage into two um, t testing stages. And don't be confused, we call it a lint because um, the first main purpose was linting, and linting is a huge thing during testing. So um, that's the case here. We're checking still generalized for every software. Um, on the dependencies, uh, we're scanning for uh, different CVEs. We're going to have a look up if the uh, config, the, the values YAMLs changed a bit. Uh, we're going to have a look if the policy changes uh, from the software vendors um, um, changed. Or even validating the um, delivered resources in form of a container image um, and the Helm files. So, um, because this is still generalizable, we created a new repository, the templates repository, which is not readable here, but um, they are all the default jobs you can imagine of that um, I just um, listed up um, um, on the page before. And um, one big tool which helped us out here a lot, which I want to recommend, is a plug-in to the Open Policy Agent. As we, as we start with the pipeline, we expected every customer to at least uh, work with Open Policy Agent in a, in a way of they, they're going to uh, deploy that some, some, someday. So uh, Open Policy Agent has a um, separate tool called ConfTest, which gives us the um, possibility to write um, policies and test them against an Open Policy Agent without actually having the deployment of an Open Policy Agent. I'm going to skip, skip the build part because we all know how, how it's done, Docker build, and that's it. So we're going to go straight to testing. And this is um, um, the actual breaking point. We're having now um, reached a point where the generalized uh, approach reached its limit. We're having um, different test cases for each um, third-party software, which has to be checked, which has um, to be delivered maybe from the different engineering teams. And now we're going to split up uh, the um, general pipeline and we're going to uh, create multiple um, Git repositories for each and every software. And they include um, um, next to the scans of the API versions, which has been a bummer um, in the 117 to 118 Kubernetes uh, uh, upgrade, for example. Um, also, um, different tests, um, we call them smoke tests. So the specific cases um, each and every one has, um, has to be checked here. The um, Repositories um, are so-called uh, Helm file repositories. Um, the reason is that we're here actually trying to utilize um, the Helm file tool, um, um, including to the uh, Helm child tool. And here also, this is not readable, I'm gonna change it uh, for the next talk, um, different um, directories 
uh, where the uh, um, where the smoke tests reside. So because of the sp uh, specific smoke tests we have, um, like for Prometheus, we have to check if the uh, metrics are actually uh, readable. Uh, that doesn't occur on any uh, MySQL server. There we have to check maybe for the um, different um, database tables or something. They're all that specific, and that's uh, why they reside inside the Helm file repository. So if an engineer tries to find anything specific about the software, they're looking into the Helm file repository and see it at a glance. So why Helm file? Helm, fi Helm file is a, um, actually uh, our most basic approach, and everybody, well, like most of our customers, um, have some um, experience with Helm file because of Helm chart, because of the de facto standard it's uh, trying to reach. So um, that's why we're working with that. We're trying to give um, the customers some um, combined uh, Helm charts, especially for multi tier applications. If you're thinking about a uh, MySQL uh, database, which actually um, includes a HA proxy uh, for this uh, scalability and stuff. Um, all this can be done um, in an easy step with Helm file and um, customers or other engineering teams. I'm saying that um, I'm just defining customer for a second. So the customers actually any engineering team who wants to use the software, not like the Sys11 customer or um, the internal teams like the platform engineering team, the um, actual software engineering team for the front end or something. So. Uh, besides that, everybody can patch uh, or add missing features into their home uh, Helm charts by using Go templates we provide them with, and they can actually just add um, further stuff more and more. I've been talking about the smoke tests before. Um, this is an example for the um, 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 Prometheus um, smoke test, uh, where I've said that we're tra actually tracking the uh, same metrics by start and have a look at uh, the uh, replica stuff. After all that is done, we actually um, secured the software supply chain management, uh, software supply chain, and we can now re-release all, uh, all the work. Uh, to be more specific, uh, we're just giving over the um, Helm files and uh, the Docker uh, um, images provided by the vendor. But also we're uh, giving um, a pre-populated um, Helm file values YAML. Um, so the best practice configs uh, we experienced or other engineering teams experienced are actually residing in there. We're also giving for the um, software delivery, for the, um, for the software deployment later on, um, um, different CI templates. And if there are any breaking changes or even bugs in the software, we're trying to offer some workarounds or even work with the engineering teams to find a workaround so everybody can use it. In the end, um, after all this is done, also the um, things we want to deliver, we're creating automated some uh, release nodes so everybody can uh, rely on that. We're actually creating uh, merge requests um, with those um, different uh, informations. And on the release nodes, we're, uh, we're um, showing um, the customers to the different merge requests so they know specifically what has changed and why there is a breaking change. One last thing I want to uh, mention is um, during the during the, the re during the release we um, actually integrated uh, Renovate and Renovate is a really cool tool for automated re uh, releases. So we had uh, we started with twelve different um, software tools and had about uh, one hundred updates per week for those twelve. Uh, just in January, they probably got a bit um, bigger by now, but that's how we started off, and it's. Um, it keeps track. Um, it keeps track of every change, so we don't have to do this manually anymore. I've talked about two fixed points in GitOps. So uh, we're having the Kubernetes uh, cluster as a uh, standard. We're having the Git um, uh, or Git as a repository or as a as a method method um, as a fixed point. And because there is like a jump between the actual runtime and the software development, uh, we had to make sure that this somehow fits for the later uh, stages. So we had to create another fixed point. We have a um, custom resource definition created, um, mainly because we wanted to enable customers um, to integrate the software into a monitoring tool, and we decided to go with Prometheus. And um, the customers do not have to install the Prometheus cluster, but if they do so, everything is already populated 
to um, go up front there. So, as I said, the continuous integration is finished. We're talking now about the um, continuous uh, delivery or the continuous deployment, depending on who you ask. So, um, just to remind, remember, uh, we wanted those um, steps uh, done before the deployment and offer those services with the um, different resources already delivered, plus best practice configs. And this is how, it's actually, how it actually looks like. We have a one GitLab CI YAML, which actually includes local GitLab CI YAMLs in every subdirectory. And inside those subdirectories, everybody can um, define the values he, he needs. Stuff like the domains for the ingress controller, um, or um, the passwords and the, um, um, the usernames for the database or stuff. This is uh, what resides in the subdirectories, and there's nothing more to it. This is how our engineering teams can actually now deploy um, really uh, new, uh, new application stacks in a really fast manner. Um, if you want to de define the services, um, we actually made them um, aware of the different environments you can use. So usually there are three environment, uh, environments, the development, staging, and production environment. And this is what you can actually um, defined for each and every software, and because of the Helm file feature of the Go, uh, I'm sorry, uh, for the Go uh, with the Go templating, you can actually uh, create so-called values extensions and add to the values which already exist. So, third-party software is a thing to go. It just eases your pain when, uh, when the boss comes around and wants uh, to deploy the new application stack you've been working on for a week. And um, we just try to enrich um, all the third-party software offers uh, by, giving up, uh, by giving out those uh, centralized um, GitLab CI pipeline, or the CI-CD pipelining itself. And if you have a look at the, all the stages we have here, you just have to um, define two. So there um, are two stages in the deployments uh, we recommend, the diff and deploy. The diff actually just checks your Kubernetes cluster and if it's uh, upgradable and if, if it's so, it's actually um, doing the deployments. Let's get to the benefits and limits. So before we get to the be benefits and limits, um, the first benefit is if it's still GitOps, it's a good thing. And we can actually say that, it, um, that we um, stayed on the path. So we're having everything is code, everything is de declarative. Um, we use Git as a mutual source. The merge requests are uh, giving us the transparency we need. We have in the continuous integration delivery set out for everybody so they can use it. And if they want to enrich it with other tools, they can do so. If we look at the software development lifecycle, maybe you've already understood that there are two um, steps we missed out on the whole uh, um, uh, chain we've created, the monitoring and the operating. So um, there are two good reasons for it. Monitoring is a reactive thing. You, you can never say um, that you can actually um, get every upcoming error with the alerting. So you always have to react to it. That's why this will be a manual step. Um, and the second one is the operating, and this is a really simple thing. Besides the reactive um, uh, process we're having, um, there's a so-called shifting left testing. And the shifting left testing enables us to actually put any operational task which can be automated up to the left side, even as far as to the actual software vendor. If there's a specific use case uh, they can um, uh, handle inside their software, they're going to get an issue, either from us, either from you as an engineering team, as a user, um, or uh, fr even from the platform engineering team if they um, see that uh, in their logging. And th this is what I want to stress to you. Um, the shifting left testing is enabling us as a software engineering team, each and every one, to uh, um, commit to um, other communities in a DevOps style and way. First, the bad thing, so the limits. 
We've been trying heavily to standardize everything we're having. So um, this me also means that we're having a lot of refining and refactoring as a, a manual and daily task, uh, which actually uh, takes a lot of effort in the end, the more we standardize. Uh, operations management can still only be partially automated, as uh, mentioned before, during the alerting and the operating. There are things we cannot catch. And um, just because we co collaborate with each other, other or have a cooperation between um, two teams doesn't mean the actual workload um, gets lower. The um, limit here is that um, it binds stuff on both sides with less time um, at, in total, but um, it's still um, there. And everybody probably experienced it, making up a pull request um, to a um, to um, open source community on GitHub doesn't mean it's going to be fixed. So uh, it has to be generalized enough. So everybody has to take its uh, profit out of that. And if the benefit is not big enough, you're running with a special use case you have to adopt by yourself. The good thing, though, is uh, we made the uh, multiple services deployment easily integratable for everyone. Everybody can look up the steps. Um, it's trans transparent in its own way. And if they want to um, um, enrich the workflow with some use cases or tests, um, on, or even on the linting stages, they can do so. If they're not able to, or if they don't have the time for it, they can actually um, open uh, issues specifically to the um, different steps. And the um, scalability for new services is there. So adding new services just gives us the um, possibility to put it in there. I forgot what I wanted to say in the, last, in the ending. Anyways, that was um, my part about the uh, th uh, third so um, software management. Um, if you want to see that um, software in action or this uh, wor uh, workflow, we're going to be on the KubeCon. I've got some free time there. I'm going to um, give you some showcases to it. So come around and join us. Thank you very much.